Google, a company known for not so many things, to be honest, except for whatever the hell this behemoth is. We already had a piece of Cougar equipment on this channel a very, very long time ago, that 120mm AIO, which funnily enough was quite good. But now Cougar is back with something very new and very good. This is the Cougar Forza 135. I have no clue if it's Forza or Forza. Forza. Forza 135. This thing is a dual tower, dual fan CPU air cooler featuring not only an awesome looking top plate, but also seven heat pipes. Will it finally beat the NHD 15? Will that goddamn cooler ever be kicked off the, its goddamn throne? Maybe. But before that, let's take a closer look at the Forza 135. Similar to pretty much every air cooler under the sun, the Forza 135 comes in the standard type of packaging containing the usual amount of specs and some imagery. Inside we'll find the Forza 135 heatsink, the two fans, installation hardware for every nowadays relevant socket, some thermal paste, the fan clips with an additional one for triple fan action, and a screwdriver. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate, shove the Intel screws through it, and fix them on the other side with the little plastic washers. Once behind the motherboard, slap the spacers on top and screw down the retention brackets in an inwards pointing position. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention bracket and install the new brackets with the thread part pointing inwards with the spacers in between. From there on both platforms, slap some thermal paste on top and screw the heatsink down. Now, before we proceed, let me just get out some of my anger about the mounting. It really sucks. The material use and, and sturdiness of everything, it's, it's all fine and great. But for the Intel backplate, the screws need to be in one of three positions depending on the socket. However, that LGA 1700 middle position is only doable with the backplate rotated so that the Intel logo is looking towards the motherboard. Which is fine in theory, but 99% of Intel backplates are just reversible out of the box, or at least the new ones are. And if you're not aware of this, you will spend a unusual amount of time shoving a screw in that will never be the way that it needs to be and, and, and figuring it out is stupidly hard. The next little anger tantrum is about the Intel brackets. Due to them being multi-socket, which is fine, they have like an empty space, an empty rail in which they can move completely freely. But once you try to screw them down, all you do is move it again. Especially because that thing is, is like a thumb screw without the possibility to use a screwdriver so your thumb will already start pushing the goddamn bracket. So with one hand you'll try to somehow keep that thing straight whilst with the other one you are essentially just pushing it away again. Anyway, it's not particularly pleasant. Considering where other manufacturers are at right now, this is just not ideal or in the very least it's not idiot proof, which is kind of an important metric nowadays. But let's get to the fans. On one side of the cooler we are supposed to install one of Cougar's MHP120 fans. This is a 2000 RPM quick 82.48 CFM 4.28mm of H2O 120mm PVM fan. Quite the thing considering it's only a heatsink. In the center of the cooler is a 140mm MHP140A fan. This 15 RPM quick 72.93 CFM 2.11mm of H2O fan is quite a bit slower, yes, but given its size it should make up for that. Instead of including a PVM splitter, Kuga made sure to have a PVM splitter attached to the fan cable itself, making it surprisingly easy to both connect and hide the cable after the fact. And now the eye candy piece of this set, the 7 6mm heat pipe heatsink. Using two identical and symmetrical towers, Kuga is trying to kick the NHD15 off its goddamn throne. In the bottom we will find a 40 by 48 mm copper nickel plated base, perfectly size for all the latest chips and going up from there we got seven heat pipes. From the top however you can only count six because one of them is ending underneath the darker brushed aluminum gray cover featuring two Cougar logos. And by the way that thing looks 
hella cool. That's some nice work right there. Due to the cooler being symmetrical from the base point of view, the right fan will be protruding above the RAM slots. By default, we are looking at 37 millimeters of space for your RAM, which for the average user will be more than enough. But in case that's just not, you can always just move the right fan upwards, creating as much space as you need, which does make this cooler 100% RAM compatible, but with an asterisk. So by default, this 58 fins cooler is 160 millimeter high, making it quite compatible, but slightly big for like the average mid power case. But God, this does look kind of nice. But enough on the cooler, let's get to the benchmarks. Blowing at 120 watts through the Forza 135 allowed the CPU to stay at a cozy 33.6 degrees C above ambient. This positions it just 0.1 freaking degrees C below the Noxia NHD15. Still an excellent result, a really really good result, but just almost. The corresponding noise to performance line looks very similar to the Gamdias Boreas P1. From start to finish, it's quite a bit ahead. Compared to the Icepack Thermal, it's also quite interesting. It's quite behind the most beautiful CUDA out there in the higher fan speed, but once you get below 50%, the Forza turns out to be much better until the cooler hits noise floor. Compared to the Noctia NHD15, however, it's it's still a lost game. From start to finish, the Forza 135's noise to performance ratio doesn't even come close to the Noxia NHD15. At 250 watts going through the socket, nothing really changed. The Forza did manage to keep the temperature at 65.3 degrees C above ambient, exactly a single spot behind the D15. But still, considering the whole list, this is an excellent result. On the noise to performance chart of the higher workload, everything begins to come closer together. Even if the Forza is still significantly behind the NHD15, it was interesting to see that the Forza has a lot more measuring points, allowing it to slowly approach noise floor. Compared to the Iceberg Thermal or Boreas P1 or even Scythe Fuma 3 at higher loads, the Forza is definitely the better choice. As usual, at 320 watts, it was finished before it even started. However, I do want to emphasize that we stop at the 320 watts workload once the chip hits 110 degrees C. And I chose this arbitrary number because once the chip hits 113 degrees, it does very weird stuff. Of course it does. The thermal limit is set to 115 watts, um, which is kind of crazy. To be sure that nothing weird starts to happen during testing, I said 110, we have three degrees upwards, so that I am sure that nothing may even happen. And we just stopped. But for the Forza 135, however, it was sitting somewhere at like 110.5, 110.6. It didn't start dropping any power, the weird stuff didn't start happening yet, but it was the first air cooler to even survive that test without immediately hitting 115 in a second. But still, it was above 110, so disqualified. So where do we stand? Kuga produced one hell of a cooler here. It's not quite the NHD15, but peak performance-wise, it's definitely on, I would even say, the same level. Noise 2 performance-wise, it is behind, but that's only compared to the NHD15. Throw any or most other air coolers, other dual tower, dual fan coolers against it, and the Forza 135 comes out as the big winner. Price-wise, it's also a different thing. You can get this thing for about 90 US dollar on UAC, and that compared to the 120 dollar price tag of a NHD15, yeah, that, that's, that's a different world. So in my opinion, this is another very good budget option against the D15. The D15 is still the overall better cooler, but every time we get a new 7 heat pipe cooler, they just keep getting closer and closer and closer to the D15 and it is noticeable and at a noticeably lower price tag. And for the Forza 135, it's definitely the contestant that managed to get the closest to the throne yet. Not bad Cougar, great look, strong performance, amazing build quality, shitty installation mechanic, 
but overall a definitely good option for the people with a 7900X, 13700K and everything below. For the people who want the most out of their bang for you know the least buck but okay for today this is going to be it for Kuga and their forza or forza i have no clue but forza 135 at this point a huge thank you to them for sending it over and on a side note we also have a discord server so if you want to join the link is down below and of course we still have channel membership so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an rg poop emoji that's a pretty good way to go Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but would also serve to build a little throne for the D15. The old one needs to be replaced because that stupid thing developed roots. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Pew Loop 2 into 80, because black is the new RG poop and it performs quite well. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.